and um, after another one of the crashes I'm back and the boat will try to wait <clears throat> up until the next crash furthermore we need to check out our inefficient research one thing is for sure it's important not to forget about these as if we will forget about them nothing good will happen if our troops won't have the best equipment out there so what we're gonna do is simple we're gonna wait a little bit and after that we will start the um, World War 2 see how our visions are being upgraded here nothing new I didn't notice much so mass assault is still low but a few other things are up to par and uh, that's it okay let's uh, wait for um, the new year How's our things going? Nazis? Looks like we're not nearly as neutral as we wish to be. But uh, we are aligning towards them and they are aligning towards us. Which is certainly something we want to see. Always. Here we've got the HQ defensive attachments. That means I need to get all of my HQs together and um, move them into one spot where I would be able to effectively reinforce them with uh, soldiers so as you can see you have quite a few divisions and quite a few HQ detachments here also so it looks like not all of them we selected now I one but uh, that one probably won't be moving anywhere okay so let's see that one is moving oh no that's what I need to do so let's look for the ones that don't move and grab them send them where they're supposed to be i just look for them second so look at that 
there's quite a few of them. So I'm looking for the ones that um, are without an order to move forward. Like this one, for example. An anti tank corpse. And there are a few more at the very bottom. Okay. All can travel there now. And what do we have here? Your Highness, Germany and next Czechoslovakia, which is now part of the country. Guarantee the independence of Poland. They have decided the United Kingdom after Czechoslovakia has been uh, occupied. Uh, Ribbentrop asked the Poles for the return of dancing and a strip of German territory across the Polish corridor on which German <clears throat> run road and railing could be built. This time Hitler met real resistance. On 31st of March 1939, the British and French guaranteed the borders of Poland. Encouraged by the guarantee, the Poles were not about to compromise. Then, as 1939 progressed, the position of the Soviet Union became critical. If Stalin allied himself with Britain, Germany would run the risk of two-front war. If she pushed the world war towards conflict, British attempts to negotiation with the Soviet Union were, however, a lackluster. For both ideological and practical reasons, Stalin had purged thousands of officers from the Red Army and the Soviets were perceived to be third-rate military force. Stalin was also unwilling to be pushed into a war which offered him little in terms of his own narrow self-interest. Then the Nazis pulled what Manfred von Schroeder calls a stroke of courage and genius. They signed their own treaty with the Soviet Union, their greatest ideological enemy. Well, I wouldn't say greatest ideological enemy. I think they're very, very alike. It's just that, for example, the Nazis would prefer poor to be richer, while the Soviets would prefer everybody to be equally reasonably rich or poor. In any case, it's fine. France is mobilizing. Okay, that's interesting. Poland is mobilizing also. So it could be that the war will soon break out. Very, very soon. Okay, that's fine for us. Let's just uh, keep waiting. And that's it. Not much has happened just yet. It's quite cold, I think. War of the Worlds, look at that. <clears throat> A recent radio adaptation of H.G. Um, Wells' novel War of the Worlds in the United States has caused mass hysteria amongst its listeners. Directed and narrated by Orson Welles, the radio drama was a special Halloween episode of Mercury Theatre on the air and described a seemingly unstoppable Martian invasion of the Earth. 
Many who caught only part of the broadcast believed it all of the real events and reacted with panic. Experts attribute this to the tense international situation and the looming specter of war that hangs over the nation. I think it's just due to the fact that people don't really know much about that time. I mean, not know much about things in that time, so they didn't have the internet uh, so well spread out as we have in 2018, and uh, they just kind of would be considered stupid in this position by most people today in 2018, because nobody would really believe that the Martians attacked Earth, just because somebody said this on the radio. So that's a thing. In any case, a war now would be certainly a very good idea, but let's wait for the 19th time. And then we may start a war. Or maybe not, it's winter. Almost winter. The Nazis are uh, becoming much, much stronger. They um, are sending people through the border. And um, <clears throat> these are not people, these are special trained individuals, killers. And what they do, they attack large concentrations of uh, people, French, British people in Britain, and uh, Netherlands, Belgium, Poland, with the sole purpose of killing them. So, for example, there's a huge crowd. They make, for example, a, um, a concert that doesn't really exist, they attract hundreds of individuals there and they kill all of them and then they disappear. So the British know about that, that it's the Germans. The Germans are the Nazis to be precise. The Nazis are doing this so that they could prepare better for the war. They, their idea is that we're going to create these ruthless killers who are going to kill millions of French, British, uh, Polish uh, and other nation nationals and it will later be much, much easier. Just look at their faces when they realize that the Nazis already killed maybe 20 million French before the war started, right? So, that's the thing. They found out about this and now they will soon declare war on a Nazi Germany. 